April 27, 1986, HBO satellite signal is hijacked. But who is Captain Midnight, and why did they do it? In 1983, John McDougal founded McDougal Electronics in Ocala, which was initially profitable. However, after HBO signal was scrambled in January 1986, the company's sales decreased, causing McDougal to take a part-time job as an operations engineer to pay bills. McDougal sent protest letters to lawmakers and spent money to promote keeping the market free from excessive pricing. A week before the jamming, he transmitted a color bar test pattern on HBO signal at 12.49 a.m., but the incident went unnoticed by HBO due to its occurrence during the overnight hours with few viewers. After closing his shop at 4 p.m. on April 26, 1986, McDougal reported to Central Florida Teleport, where he oversaw the uplink of Pee Wee's Big Adventure for the pay-per-view network, People's Choice. At 6 p.m., the other engineer left, leaving McDougal alone to set up SMPTE color bars and a character generator to compose a message on the television screen. He chose the name Captain Midnight from a recent film he had watched, On the Air Live with Captain Midnight, and began the message with a polite greeting to avoid being insulting. McDougal transmitted a signal onto the satellite carrying HBO, overriding the telecast of the movie The Falcon and the Snowman for four and a half minutes. The five-line text message appeared on HBO subscriber screens across the eastern half of the U.S. starting at 12.32 a.m. on April 27th. Hughes Communication noticed the jamming and threatened to shut down HBO's satellite signal or alter the satellite's course. The HBO technician increased transmission power from 125 watts to 2,000 watts, but McDougal increased his power in a control battle that lasted about 90 seconds. Fearing that a further power increase would damage the satellite, McDougal abandoned his control and went home. The following day, he felt guilty about his actions and hoped that the jamming would not be noticed. However, his actions was reported on network television and he later pretended to have no knowledge of the intrusion when he returned to work. McDougal only confided in close friends and had fears of federal agents visiting his home. After the intrusion, HBO contacted the FCC, which assembled a staff for an emergency meeting to discuss catching the culprit. The FCC, FBI, and DOJ launched investigations, with more than 200 people calling the FBI to confess that they were the hijackers. The FCC narrowed down potential suspects by determining which teleport uplink sites out of the 2,000 licensed transmitters in the U.S. had the capability to override the HBO signal, which brought the number of potential stations down to 12. After FCC investigators visited these stations, there were now three prime suspects, including McDougal. The FCC interviewed McDougal, and he claimed he did not commit any crime. However, after consulting with an attorney and realizing the potential consequences of a trial, he agreed to cooperate fully with the FCC. After media and industry pressure, he surrendered and pleaded guilty. McDougall's actions raised concerns over satellite communications, leading to the passing of the Electronic Communications Privacy Act of 1986. McDougall's motivation was to advocate for the marketplace to set prices, and while some regard him as a folk hero, Others denounce his actions as intentional interference or video terrorism. McDougall did not regret his actions, but wished his motivations were more clearly understood.